Conservative leadership, to be fair, I think they're in a bit of a muddle about how to take forward the issue of the European Union, how to tackle the issue of the Lisbon Treaty. Well, we think we've got the answer. We've wrote, written about it at some extensive length, but I think there's one picture which would say a thousand words. David Cameron, that's how we should deal with the issue of the European Union. Margaret Thatcher, the president of the Bruges Group, would know just what to do. That's our message at this conference. Let's have a referendum on our relationship with the EU. Let the British people's voice be heard. The public also knows that there's a great deceit at the heart of British public life. And that deceit is that we are no longer a self-governing democracy. Parliament has given away the people's right to self-government. Now, you'll be aware that during the last year, the Lisbon Treaty has completed all its parliamentary stages. And the good news is, we won the argument. During the passage of the treaty, William Hay accepted the arguments that the Bruges Group and others have been putting forward. Yes, the Lisbon Treaty is the European Constitution. Yes, the European Union will have its own legal personality. Yes, the Court of Justice will have the power to decide our rights as EU citizens. The Charter of Fundamental Rights will be legally binding. The treaty is a self-amending treaty, and the Council of Ministers will be given the power to transfer more and more responsibilities to the European Union without going through this tiresome process of parliamentary approval and referendums. This really is game, set and match to the European Union. Effectively, Britain would be left with some of the trappings of an independent state, but essentially we're moving towards becoming like the Massachusetts as a state in the United States. Now the Conservative Party in Parliament has put forward and accepted all of these arguments. But one thing that worries me just a little bit, they didn't actually try and carry these arguments to the country. I'm not aware of the leader of the opposition making one speech in which outside Parliament he sought to expose the fundamental of transfers of power that are taking place under this treaty. Instead, he invited Mr. Clark to join the Shadow Cabinet. Now, we are led to believe that the Czech President <coughs> can save the British people from having their system of government fundamentally change. Ladies and gentlemen, isn't it time for Britain to stop hiding behind the small countries of Europe? I call upon the Conservative Party to act in the national interest then the British people can save themselves. This week, we must hear from the Conservative leadership that there will be a referendum when they are elected. <laughs> William Hague says, we can only have one policy at a time. The policy is to have a referendum. We want that one policy put to the British people in a general election. Yeah. If the Conservative Party is sincere in its opposition to the Lisbon Treaty, and I have no reason to believe it is not, then of course it would want a referendum to strengthen its negotiating position. Now, 70 years ago, around this time, when the German forces were flooding into Poland, Chamberlain came to the House of Commons and prevaricated as to whether we were going to honour our pledges to come to the aid of the Poles. 
At that moment, Leo Avery, an anti-appeasement Tory, shouted across the chamber to Arthur Greenwood, who was going to reply for the Labour Party, Arthur, speak for England. The message that goes from this meeting and for the, from this conference today should be, David, speak for Britain. When I look at how many people have come here today from this party conference, uh, which seems to me to be quite a large, shall we say, dissident gathering, it strikes me that there are a great many people in this party who are members of the party, who have come, given up their time to come to this conference, who may be slightly concerned at the line that they're getting from the Shadow Cabinet. The choice ahead of us is not whether or not we have a renegotiation, it's whether we stay in or get out. Now, I'm not being absolutist about this for the sake of it, I'm being realistic. I went to Brussels three weeks ago and spent two days talking to diplomats from our own country and from other countries about the Treaty of Lisbon for a series that my newspaper did on this subject. And they all said there will be no intergovernmental conference for 10 or possibly 15 years. We have done with treaty making. Now, it's all very well to talk about renegotiation, but the problem is it takes another 26 countries around Europe to agree to renegotiate with us. We can't renegotiate something on our own, and at the moment, the Commission will not let us have another intergovernmental conference. So Mr Cameron has to be quite honest about this. He can have a referendum, but that referendum has to perhaps ask the question, do you want me as your head of government to threaten the European Union that if you don't decide to change your mind and have a renegotiation and have an intergovernmental conference, we will leave? Now that is the only honest position. I must say it's a question I rather wish had been asked about 20 years ago. But it may have to come to that, because there is no middle way. You cannot just unpick the treaty, which, to my intense regret, we have ratified, and which, to my even greater regret, I fear the rest of Europe will, will complete ratification of before the general election. And I am always affected by the memory of something that Enoch Powell said very famously 41 years ago at the party conference at Blackpool. Uh, he was then talking about immigration, something we haven't touched on today. But he said, too often today, people are ready to tell us, this is not possible, that is not possible. I say, whatever the true interest of our country calls for is always possible. We have nothing to fear but our own doubts. The real purpose of a political party, the way that it ensures it doesn't fail the British people, or doesn't fail any of the people in whatever country it happens to exist, is that it governs in their interest, in their objective interest. If the Conservative Party could just go away from this conference saying, we're going to forget the focus groups, we're going to forget the PR spin, we're going to look at the real problems besetting this country and we're going to deal with them, however much that might make people who normally vote Labour and Lib Dem upset, then it will win the election. If it doesn't do that, who knows? Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, comrades, as I believe the Conservative Party now addresses each other. <laughs> uh, was, it wise, was it wise, I asked myself, to hold a dissident, even perhaps insurgent meeting by the end of it, if I have anything to do with it, uh, so near to the site of the Peterloo Massacre? <laughs> I hope not. Uh, however, uh, a number of urgent pieces of breaking news. I understand that uh, David Cameron invited Boris Johnson for a drink last night to sort out their problems over Europe. Uh, I also understand he put Rohypnol in his champagne. And I believe that he will be putting Rohypnol in the champagne of everybody here, if you're allowed, of course, to drink champagne in public, because he hopes very much that this will be the Rohypnol conference of the Conservative Party. I believe that our national liberty uh, from habeas corpus to the system of jury trial are our most precious possessions. And I believe they should be defended to the end. These positions make me, as far as the Conservative Party, the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats are concerned, an extremist. I hope you will join me in my extremism and reject them all. Thank you.